Hello everybody, Morilibus here. I am back in my nether test world. So I am at a fortress in which I have removed all spawnable area around the fortress. And then I converted the fortress to stone brick and converted the top area to half slabs to prevent spawning. So this is where I've done all my tests for like wither skeletons and such. And I'm here to do another one. So I've set up multiple spawning pads in this area prior and I've positioned these wither skulls to indicate where I have seen wither skulls spawn in the past. So if you were to replace one of these with a block, that signifies that a wither skeleton would have spawned on top of that block. So you can kind of see them all over the place. So that's kind of where I yeah, had previously set up some spawning pads to do some other testing. But that was back in the snapshots and Today I have some additional information and also some additional tools. So, one of such tools is from Capo PC. He made that mod that you can see in the information screen there on the bottom left where it says monsters and it'll show you what monsters will spawn in the space that you are occupying and it's calculating for your head location. So currently right here is kind of where the wither structure is or where there would normally be a uh, the platform. And you can see where their skeleton is inside there. And then if we step outside of there, it no longer allows for the wither skeletons. So this is very handy, better than trial and error, which is what I was relying on before. <laughs> but yeah, so we have that tool. So what I've done is I basically ripped out an intersection. So I have one over here that's still intact. It's essentially one of these guys right here. So it's essentially this thing that I've basically ripped off the top of and I set a platform. This platform I've set up is at the lowest part of where they will spawn. So for instance, they will spawn here right on top of this block, but they won't spawn any lower. And then I've laid out some other colored blocks to indicate a few things. So I recommend checking out Cabo PC's video. I'm going to link it in the description and have annotation up. But he kind of goes over all the different um, areas of another fortress and explains kind of the bounding blocks and where the wither skeleton will and will not spawn. So definitely worth checking out. I'm just going to touch base on this thing and another, yeah, and some of the other properties of their spawning. So in for these intersections, they have a unique uh, property that they not only spawn it in this stone brick area, but there's also this area that I've indicated with the red brick that they will also spawn in. So if you notice the monsters, the wither skeleton is still showing up in here, even though we are outside the actual nether fortress. So this actually makes up a fairly decent area and could be ideal for setting up uh, mob traps or even just areas such as this to go around and kill them. And the other benefit of locations like this is you can actually get four spawning platforms in place and still have them spawn. Where other parts of the fortress, you can usually only get three. So if you notice here at this site, I could still get them to spawn right there. But if I go any higher, I no longer can. So you could actually have four spawning platforms if you build in an area like this. Now, the thing, if you may, you may have noticed that there's skulls outside of this area. So in this red wool area, I have seen and witnessed wither skeletons spawning here. So, and, and I think over here and over here, yeah. So now according to the information we have, that shouldn't be happening. And according to this mod, that it says that they can't spawn there. So why have they spawned there is the question. And I have to say props up to one of my subscribers, uh, yippiekaye360, who actually shared this information with me. And I am now going to share it with you. So there's... JL2579, 
who's done an excellent video on mob spawning mechanics and mob efficiency. Definitely worth checking out. I will also link that in the description and put up an annotation for that. So in that video, I'll give a kind of a quick summary, but definitely check that out because he does an excellent job and I may screw up. <laughs> but essentially, every time the game wants to spawn a mob, it will pick a random air block anywhere in the game that isn't occupied. So for instance, it could choose this space right here. So when the game picks this, it will go through a series of calculations. So it can move along the x-axis up to five blocks. So it could th theoretically choose this block and then it would move back between zero and five blocks and could end up right back where it started or anywhere in between. And it does the same thing for the Z. It will move up to between 0 and 5, 1 way, 0, 5, etc. So that allows, from the initial spot that it chose, it can actually end up spawning a mob five blocks away. So what I think is happening is because this initial block it's choosing is saying that wither skeletons can spawn here, when it actually calculates and places the mob over here, it's still able to place that wither skeleton. And then from here, it does three more calculations, I believe. I think it's a total of four placements per chosen air block. So from here, we do the exact same thing. But from here on, and it's now not able to spawn the wither skeleton, I believe, is kind of what is going on there. So that kind of explains why they're able to spawn outside of where we kind of think they should be able to. So there was originally people were thinking kind of as long as it was the same chunk, then the mob could spawn. But that wasn't the case. And I've tried confirming that and it's way too inconsistent. Sometimes it, it appeared to be true, but other times, even though it was sharing a chunk, I could not get a wither skeleton to spawn. And in this scenario, things spawn pretty quickly. So why don't we just switch over to hard mode and we can witness these guys spawning. And also cover that glass roof. I have that in place for a few reasons. One, so I don't get gas spawning. But the other reason is to deal with the weather skeletons. If you were to build a spawning area for them and you just wanted to go around killing them, you could... Here we go. These might have all spawned where we would think they would. Yeah. But these guys actually get stuck in a too high ceiling. They're able to spawn, but they can't move. They also won't suffocate. So even though I have glass here, it doesn't have to be glass. It could be a solid block. I just used glass so we could see through. But yeah, they won't suffocate. And yeah, they can't move. So unless you like bump into them, they won't be able to hit you. So you could just walk up and kill them. The only way they will actually move is if other mobs push them around. So that was kind of how I went about finding these places. I'd wait for them to spawn, and as soon as I saw them, I could go up and place this underneath. So there wasn't really a chance for them to move around. So this is these locations are in fact correct and not due to them being pushed around. So let's just cycle this off again and see if we can witness one spawning in the red. Oh, close. Well, we got the regular skeletons that did spawn there. And I think that's why these guys get stuck. I think the spawning is based on the regular skeletons. And since they're actually, they're lower than or sm shorter than too high, they're able to spawn. And I think that's why the wither skeletons spawn as well. But then once they're placed in the game, they're actually too big to fit in there. There's a guy there. I didn't actually see him spawn there, but it's probably safe to say that he did spawn there. We're at mob cap now, so let me just cycle that on and off again. And let's see if we can witness one again. I could probably get rid of that. 
Oh, we got him in the brick, but we know that's okay. There's a guy right there. So clearly he's in the red. So he spawned somewhere where we kind of didn't think he should be able to. And yeah, thanks to yippee 360 who kind of combined everybody's findings to show that, yeah, it's due to the way the the spawning algorithm works out. So, yeah. So if you wanted to set up a mob farm, you could possibly do it at one of these intersections. Because that's a fairly big area right here. You could count it out, actually, and find out the dimensions. This area, yeah, it occupies a 29 block area, or 29 by 29 square. So you could have 29, 29 times 4 for your spawning areas, if you just wanted to run around and kill them. Or we could kind of look at what kind of mob traps might work in this kind of area. Okay, I just threw this together real quick. It's not by any means optimized at all. I basically just copy-pasted a bunch of them together to give an idea of something that could be done, maybe, to be used as a wither skeleton mob system. So this is kind of the one that JL shows as being the one that he preferred. So it's a single string with the redstone that fires the whole row of pistons. And there's plenty of air blocks. The only thing that really isn't air block is the piston and then this one stone block with the redstone on top of it. The rest you could have air blocks all the way around. So when you built this thing, you just want to make sure that there is air gap 20 blocks away from the outermost spawning area. So in this case, this nether forest, this structure here is actually in the way. Like right here, you can see the piston. So the spawning is right behind that piston. So these guys are would actually be interfering. But anyway, just to give a rough idea. So I kind of outlined the area that we were looking at before in the red wool. And I've identified the four spawning pads. So these were the four heights. That was the lowest section you could build at. Second, third, and then the fourth level there. So that's what I got here is a four-level mob system. And if you want to know exactly where these are, uh, again, I recommend going to go watch um, Cabo PC because he'll go over all of that. But the lowest I believe you can build in a walkway is five down, I believe it is. But yeah, I would check that out to double check that. Um, so under here, you can kind of see I left out this outline and I lowered it down just so we could kind of see what's going on. And probably the ideal way of doing a mob trap like this would be to get the spawning areas actually over top of the, uh, the walkway itself, having those kind of maximized in that area. And then you could have other ones in the kind of like secondary locations being that red wool area. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this because it's going to be in the way and it's going to interfere with our spawning. And then we will fire this up just to give an idea of like optimized how many wither skeletons you could expect to see if you could find a wither, wither, uh, nether fortress that is, let's say, over a big, huge lake of lava or you're willing to spend some time and remove all the netherrack or put down half slabs or whatever you feel like doing. If you want to go ahead and try to make the area around that fortress or the area you wish to build a mob trap completely spawn proof, we could kind of demonstrate the rate at which you could produce wither skeletons. Of course, you don't just want them falling to their death. You'd want to reset their fall damage and capture them so that you could hit them and possibly use a looting three enchanted sword to try to collect as many skulls as you can. So, let's fire this on. And see how it works. I haven't actually tested it, so we will kind of witness it. I could probably go underneath and we can just watch how many skeletons. Of course, you'll have blazes there as well that won't get their damage reset. But there is other ways that we can deal with all those. But you can see the skeletons falling. Actually, let's bring this up so we can see. 
So one important thing that JL mentioned is you want to try to keep the mob cap from being reached. So you basically want to kill them as quickly as you can. Of course, with Blaze, that's not as easy as other mobs because you can't just let them fall to their death. But you can see there are plenty of skeletons falling. And in terms of filtering out your mobs, we could look at that real quick. I'll set it up and show you. I've demonstrated it in another video, and this was again shown to me by YippieKaye360. Okay, so here is a like a crusher system. And this relies on the fact that the wither skeletons are taller than the other mobs. So if we get some assortment of mobs in here, let's get some blaze. Probably, that's probably really loud. Okay, so we've got our mobs in here. So if you set up this, you could have them all kind of filter down into a trench. Or you could try to set up like an automatic crusher system. And yeah, this will kill all mobs except the wither skeletons. The blaze will take longer because they don't take any damage. But if you were getting them down to about a one hit, all the other mobs would die instantly. And then from here you could go in and kill off the rest. So you could combine, whoops, hey guy, you could combine, yeah, a crusher system with a fall trap or a piston pusher trap to try to maximize your collection of wither skeletons. And again, this is just a really rough mock-up. It's not optimized or really thought out all that well yet, but just an idea and to show you what could be possible. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I covered everything. I may have forgotten stuff or gotten a few things wrong. If I did, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.